Good evening, each and every one of you out there. Pleasant Sunday, blessed Sunday. I'm so happy that I do this show from where I'm staying because I'm always running in the shower, trying to get everything last minute prepared and, and late for my own show. First guest, hails from our sweet TNT, goes by the name of Aaron Duncan. And if you don't know who he is, again, that's why I put together these reels and I'll show you so you get a little bit of his history and his music. And then we'll bring him on and, and talk the talk, yeah? So, yes. It's by the leaves alone. Tell me, can you feel it? Come, let me go. Let's go now. You ready to roll? Ready to roll? Roll. Let's go now. It's time to come back again. I come for the people. Welcome to the show, Aaron Duncan. Me, man. Yo, so just um, when I started pulling together your reel, what I love about you to start is that you are one of these guys that tend to do music videos for all of your songs. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> love that. Like, I love that. So it makes my job easier. It makes people's job easier to say, well, man, I know this song. Yeah. I have no clue who Aaron Duncan is, but now they can identify yeah. a face to the song by going on YouTube or wherever and, and, and getting a music video. So kudos to that, man. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I want to say, so I reached out to you and I asked if he was in Trini. And I think I caught myself today when I was getting ready that there's Aaron Fresh and there's Aaron Duncan. Two completely different people. Right. But for some reason, I keep mixing you all up. And I'm thinking, Aaron Duncan lives somewhere in L.A. or in the U.S. And Ray, 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 yeah, and, I, and that's why I kept asking if he was in Trini. Right. But born and bred in Trini, where did you go to school? QRC? No, 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 no. I finished school. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but... I, I, when, I, when I used to go to school, I went to QRC for about one year. And right. And I transferred to St. George's College. Really? Yeah, man. Why? <laughs> well, it's really more on the academic side, right? Mm -hmm. Um, St. George's College was more of a school for Aaron Duncan, basically saying they focus more on your music as well. And I am an artist. Right. So a school that is helping me in my academics, not only my academics, but also music wise they have they have artists such as voice Ufanals, nadia batson these soca legends came out of st george's college so you can know by their repertoire they are right. musically inclined with the best of the best in soca music so you are educated means something you know because i mean as far as when i was you know when i did CXC, you know, oh, what do you call it? Yes, yeah, um, common entrance. <laughs> right. I, I sounded like myself, but common entrance at the time. Uh, it was just about pure academics back for me. It was, yo, there's first choice schools, second choice schools, third choice schools. But I, and I think the majority of us, you know, my peers never studied the old music aspect. So you're telling me now today in college, what is, you know, St. Mary's, Fatima, QRC, St. George's, there's a, a program now that is more defined towards music no <laughs> that's not necessarily what i'm telling you right okay there's certain schools in trinidad right now that focus more on your academics than music yeah. at the right. same time there's also a lot of schools that focus on your music as well and i wanted to be in the schools that focus on your music and st george's college is known to be the number one school that focuses on your music didn't know that right <laughs> yeah. Okay, so bam, you switch QRC, St. George's, and, and, and is that where it all started for you? You was into music before your college days? Oh, man, I was into music since the age of three years old. Three? I was into music. Yeah, <laughs> I was into music a long time. Long yeah. time. I was into music since... <laughs> it's in the song, Can You Feel It, right? Yeah. Um, 
at the age of six years old is when I actually went out to the world. That's when the world actually started to know who Aaron Duncan was right. on that scale when I won the Junior Calypso Mona competition. So can but you I, feel it was six years old for a no, show? No. No, can you feel it wasn't six years? What what happened? So give, at, us, give us the history. Give us the, right, let me, yeah. I, what happened at six years old was the time when I won the Junior Calypso Monarch here in Trinidad, right? Right. But that clip, that footage, went viral even before viral was a thing. Right. Right? Um, because it was so shocking to the world that a six-year-old boy who shouldn't be able to even spell his name correctly yet could sing four verses, four choruses of a calypso. Right? And from that Mad. is when the world started to know who Aaron Duncan was. But at the age of that six years later, I mean, throughout the six years, I've been going all over the world performing and stuff like that, right? right. But at the age of 12, six years later, that's when Can You Feel It came out. Right. So at and 12, when, Can You Feel It, first soca song, huh? First soca song, yeah. Because there's always Calypso before. Huh? It was Calypso before. It wasn't always Calypso before. It was Calypso and Soka. But right. the competitions in Trinidad for Junior Soka Monarch and stuff, you don't really put your music out there, right? So, right. Can You Feel It was the first song that we ever put out to the world. Right? And right. when we put out Can You Feel It, it just went all over and then the world started to know Aaron Duncan on a large scale. Right. Yeah. So when you were just doing this Calypso and the, mon the Junior Monarchs in school, were you very popular for that in your college? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. were like a celebrity within your own world, but the whole of the rest of us didn't really know until can you yeah. feel it. Yeah. That is very true. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So like I always make this joke, but I say it's like ninety nine point nine percent of the artists that are in soca music started off somewhere in, in in gospel singing or church, and it was something to do with church, and then they got out of that, and then they did the competition in school, and then ready to move on, you know, and then soca. What we but, know is that ninety nine percent of the artists who is big soca artists right now, they all started in the junior competitions, you know. Yeah. You can't and a lot of people don't know that. That did. You can't name one successful one. I'm not talking about major successful. The voice, like names. Give us Marshall, some names. The voice, the Marshall, the Patrice. Yeah. Cohen Dubois. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can't name one of them who did not start in the Junior Calypso Monarch. Wow. So you yeah. think that's a good foundation or starting Always point? Always a good foundation. But what what is what is it exactly that that competition brings that makes you elevate to move on to being better? Right. As the world know, Trinidad and Tobago is the mecca of soca and calypso. Right. Right. Where there is the seniors, the people that we look up to as the big ones in the soca industry they should always have room for the juniors, the ones who want to be, the ones who look up to these people, right? So that right. is how the junior competition was born. There's, there's senior monarch, which is soca monarch, and there's junior soca monarch, right? right. Okay. When you enter the juniors as a six-year-old coming up to about 18 years, you could be. When you enter the juniors and you make your name in the juniors, you are now letting the world or not if you don't want to say the world let me say the caribbean know who you are through that competition right right but why most people don't really get their name out there as well you could win that competition but it's the talent and it's what you bring to the table is what makes you win that competition well not what makes you win that competition but what makes the world care about who you are right <laughs> You understand? Because there are many people who won the Junior Soka Monarch, the Junior Calypso Monarch. But since, since that age, I won the Junior Calypso Monarch six, seven, eight. And when I was 11, year old, 11 years old, that was the last time I won it. Right? Okay. 
since that, there hasn't been somebody who shot the world through juniors. No. Okay. Yeah. Before yeah. you, who was the who was the person that shocked the world? Right. It had the Karina Shays. It had the Megan Waldrons. There was Marshall Montano. <laughs> right. When Marshall came on the scene with Too Young to soak in the Pampers and stuff like that, shocked the world. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Cohen Dubois, Ola Tunje, Patrice Roberts. These people came from there and they saw the young talent. And that is why they, they basically signed themselves up to be the biggest ever. Okay. <laughs> through showing themselves, showing their talent through that competition. Right. So yeah. will you say, and this is what I'm trying to figure out now, right? If you are a senior or more of an exp experienced soccer artist, are these guys coming and looking, or girls looking at the young junior monarchs and trying to say, man, scouting? Do, are there people scouting for your talent or the, the talent in that level? Because I never knew to go there unless something came out of it and you saw it in the news and said, man, look at this. The person at one junior monarch sang this song and it was so great and what it did. Like when Marshall did it with two young Kasoka, they made a really big deal about that, right? I don't know why, but that was maybe, you know, I just see he came in the Pampers or whatever, but whatever he did was different. And there's a lot of people that went through that competition that I had no clue when they were there and when they won. And how do we now change it where maybe we could bring more people or bring more awareness to that competition to so look for the younger talent to then say, man, this is the future here. Because I didn't know, I never knew about that till, till someone won and, and they was publicized. As I said, many people could win the juniors. Many people could win anything. Mm -hmm. But it's what you do to wow the people. Yeah. What you do. Ma okay, let me look at it, right? Marshall came out in a pampers, right? Too mm -hmm. young to soak up a nine-year-old coming on the stage of... And that wasn't the juniors he went in. He went in the big Calypso Munak. He went in the seniors. As a nine-year-old, pump yeah. was on singing too young to soca. Viral. <laughs> yeah. Viral. Everybody wanna know who is this little boy going against big guns, adults. Yeah. And in a pampers. Yeah. yeah. Not only was it funny, but it went viral because he came up and he didn't just stand up on the stage, make two steps, and that was it. He worked the stage, he commanded the crowd, he made himself known there. That was the that was the beginning of Marshall Montana. Yeah. And that went on, went on. You see what's going on with me right now? That happened with him. Right. That went on, went on for years. There were many people who won Junior Monarch after him. But that stand out. And then, I, I just, I want to see if I could have find the clip for you. <laughs> right? That was yeah. trying to do right now. Yeah, Marshall Montano did that. And then I did this at the age of six. Let me show you this. Check this out. All right? After Marshall did Too Young to Soka in 1987, I believe. About 20 years later, or 30, I came with this. <laughs> Why 
<laughs> yeah man so, you know what i love about that though Aaron, is that you see it in from young like i could see look at you the whole you six years old i that was when i was six years i'm 17 now and you're 17 now and i feel yeah. as if you had more i feel more spunk <laughs> like Again, it gets like you had more spunk then. <laughs> I'm not saying it'll be spunk now, but like I you had this fuel spunk. of fire to come and prove a point, and it was right. spicy. Yeah, and the point I'm trying to show you here is that there could be many winners, but it's which one that stands out to the world that makes yeah. you come out as ways. Well, he's the next this, he's this some because when let me say back in Marshall time, right. Yeah. Back in Marshall time, the the big the big man in the business was Sparrow, mm -hmm. the Kitchener, those kind of people were the big ones, right? Yeah. So when they saw Marshall come up on the stage and say they say I'm too young to soak up, they said this man is going to be the next Sparrow. He's going to be the next Kitchener, right? Yeah. So two years later, Marshall is the biggest man in the business. I come now with this. And they say, well, Iran Duncan is going to be the next Marshall Montana. We never know what's going to happen 40 years from now. And who little, this little boy or little girl could come and say, hey, this is going to be the next Iran Duncan. <laughs> and yeah, that's how the cycle of life goes on. That so is... You must come to beat it. <laughs> I mean, but do you feel, do you feel added pressure to be the next? Or you nah. just trying to be you now? I don't feel added pressure to be the next Marshall Montano because I don't want to be the next Marshall Montano. <laughs> right, right. I want to be Aaron Duncan. Right? Yeah. I want to leave my mark. I don't want people to see me as the second coming of Marshall. I want people to see the original. This is the new. This is the... This is a new generation. This is the guy who's going to take the youth forward yeah, and right. carry them into something new. Right? That's what I want to do. Because if I didn't want to do that, I would have grown a rass. I would have started to say, hey, hard a second, and I would have just be like Marshall. I yeah. don't want to do that. I make my own, my own standard, you know? Yeah. So that's basically me there. <laughs> nice. Are there who, which soccer artists? today in the in the younger when i say the younger generation of artists who do you look up to who do you work with as any are you getting mentored or you, who do you look up to right well i look up to the same marshall montano right the way how basically any song that marshall sings you may you you have 95 percent of love in it right and that is something that most artists will try their best to that is a code that many people didn't crack as yet <laughs> i mm -hmm. should say and it's something that i look up to him through the way he performs the way how he could command the crowd with a song that right. may not be even known and the way i how he could work this whole soca industry in on a business standpoint as well okay they don't they don't have more brain than Marshall Montan. <laughs> it, yeah. he, he runs the show and <laughs> I look up to him to learn what I can learn from him. But yeah. in terms of a mentor, but, I uh, really the way you, the way you're speaking about double M is, is does he is he actually like a mentor of yours? Does he help you and, and guide you? No, I don't have a no, he doesn't really mentor me, but no. Marshall, Marshall and I and every other soccer artist. We all have a good relationship. Right. We all have a great relationship. Right. And right. I'm asking this because I know within certain even artists, DJs, they form little, I want to say a clique, right? And I've realized within forming these circles, there's a lot of strength that comes of this. 
a kind of unity and a family, and then they breed and help each other push. So right. I'm asking you as a younger artist out there that are you a part of any of these circles or you're just on your own right now doing your thing? Let me say I'm just on my own right now. Okay. Why and why I think that, and why I think it's it it, it 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 is like that because of my age. Right. Right. A, a 17 year old wouldn't look too good at being around 30 year olds, 40 year olds, and yes. <laughs> them kind of thing, right? <laughs> you right. So I'm okay with it. And yeah. why I'm not vexed about that. I have more time to make my own legacy. I have right. more time to create what I want to create. I don't want help. <laughs> yeah. I don't want help. I want to do this on my own. So when by God's grace, I reach up there. Yeah. Nobody could say, well, he's up there because he was helped by Marshall. He was up there because he was helped by this one. He was helped by, I don't want that. <laughs> right. You understand? Um, one second, Aaron. Folks like, hey, Lisa, Lily, Dwight, y'all are putting comments, but I think y'all have it switched off so y'all can give permission to the app so we can read the comments. Huh? So yeah, you'll make sure to turn on the right settings in your Facebook settings so we can read your comments. Um, Facebook, so anybody want to leave a comment that we could put, post up. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I understand what you're saying, Aaron, but experience has also taught me that I look at a young, talented guy like yourself, and basically, we could 10. I see that, yeah, you could do it your way, but you could also be 10x that I could take your talent and put you with some people who have certain, I guess, more experienced guys that you could align with that will get you pushed 10 times faster. Exactly. Than where you would be on your own, right? And it's not—they're not they are not there to to spoon feed you or to make life easy. They're just there to show you certain things that mistakes they made, no, knowledge you... they gain off the years of experience. Yeah. And they can say, Aaron, if you take this and you do that, you'll have a better result in the end yeah, than if you just go and learn it on your own, right? And I, I, I don't. So I agree. It, it, it's it nice to to say, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna work this out on my own. But we, we live in an age where you don't really have to, right? And then we, we're always that way. You could really find a way that could do what you're doing, be yourself, and still learn from several people and be yeah. 10 times better. Because up to today, I don't think like for myself, I've found the right person to mentor me. So I have been doing a lot of things on my own, but I would love to know, let me just call him, you know, uh, I don't know, a Mark Cuban or somebody to say, hey, Dre, listen, I could take what you're doing and I could show you a better business way, you know, or or... A Mark Zuckerberg could say, Dre, let me show you the Facebook way to take Trinity Jungle Juice and make that the next Facebook. Because I will maybe I could get there in two years as opposed to in 10 years. Yeah. And why not? I, I if I, if a man could tell me I could get somewhere two years and cut eight years off and I'm still being me and doing what I want, then I'm all for it. But don't tell me to change and be somebody different. That's the thin line of it. Yeah. That is the thin line of it. You're walking. Yes, the picture may look nice, you know, but the thin line, the things that is not written in bold is what yeah. you don't see and, yeah. why it's, and why it is good to do things on your own. <laughs> because, yeah, you could you could try your best to work with other people. Like, let me say in the course of management, right? You have a manager. This manager could be helping you get a lot of work and stuff and stuff like that. But what is the percentage this manager is taking from you? How much money are you gaining? How much are you gaining or how much are you losing mm -hmm. by having this mentor, this management over you? Right. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Right. But yeah, I still see there's a difference between management and mentorship though, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's somebody who managing you, which is business, and there's a mentor, which is skills and who and who it into your 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 abilities to grow. Right. Yeah. Well, but and, in 2020, management does play the role. In it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, have management or they're playing that role as well. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And but you know, as I said, I, I still I still think that someone like yourself could, I'm not saying you need to lime and knock about with these people, but studio time conversations just like how kobe and michael jordan had a relationship yeah you know kobe was calling michael and talking to him regularly after games hey mike i scored x amount of points scored 40 but when i hit 60 
what I do wrong? And Mike will say, well, bam, 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 you know? But he never, I mean, he looked up to Mike. He wanted to be Mike, but he still wanted to be Kobe. But, yeah, you know, and that's why I asked, because the way you're speaking about, in this case, Marshall, I assume that you and Marshall had a relationship where you just call him and say, you know, I'm working on this project and I want your feedback on something. And he will board Aaron, you're on it. Not yet. Not Soon. yet. Not yet. Good. I guess I guess age, as I said before, I guess age is a huge factor of that. Right. Right? I guess yeah. age is a huge factor of that. I'm not 18 and older as yet. Right. So you know, in the, right. you don't know what could be the reason. But I don't I don't think that it will not happen. I believe someday it will happen. But in the meantime, I guess they just want me to build myself get a foundation for myself and then they could embrace me because every single one of the artists that you know who is in the soca industry they had this time in their they had this time period in their life in the industry where they had to build for themselves so i don't think they want to make any exceptions for aaron duncan <laughs> okay yeah okay all right um uh, i have terry in the back ready to well right. waiting for the link in and what I normally do, Aaron, and I, just, I, I didn't get a chance to explain this to Terry. Um, I'll get on and, and we'll all just continue the conversation, but I'll talk to her and you'll still be a part of it. Um, as soon as I get her on, what I, I guess what I wanted to figure out from you is the direction of the industry. And are you happy where it is right now as far as you growing up or soccer? And do you think we are on the right track? And also forgetting soca music, you know, on the next level, as they say, um, globally and whatnot. Um, but while you're thinking about that, um, I'm gonna introduce Cherry um, and pull her, um, get her reel going, and then bring her on. So Cherry, I see you. Just hold tight. Let me get your reel lined up, and then we will continue this chat. Just for dark meat alone Your touch you still remember how we felt Those sweet words you whisper I can't forget You made me smile Haven't seen you for a while Terry, 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 Terry Lyons Hi, hi, Welcome hi. to the show Thank you for having me um, how are Okay, is it me? I'm going to make sure I load on my volume without much feedback Do we have feedback? No, I'm not getting a feedback. Okay, great. Um, I don't know where Aaron went. Um, his video went off, and I don't know why. Aaron, turn your video back once so I can bring you back. But um, yeah, Terry, talk to us. What have you been uh, up to? Ah, uh, just been home. Um, getting. I uh, have some shows that I actually throw called the Calypso Fest, which right. I stream through Wack. Um. I'm having one on the 13th. Um, it's an avenue in which I hire artists to come perform and make money for themselves. To because everybody needs a different. Everybody needs a different. So you know, you come, you perform, you get paid, um, and we still get to not just assisting entertainers, is more or less keeping the um culture of calypso alive. Okay. Because during if during the year you don't hear Calypso until Carnival and it's only for like three weeks for the tents. Right. And after those three so weeks. So the scene with Calypso is yeah. way worse than soca music, is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> so people is always say, oh, you only play soca for Carnival time and Carnival and Carnival. Calypso even have a shorter period? A short period. Short, short period. Because for that three weeks is just the Thursday, Friday and Saturday and Sunday's tent. 
and then for the whole week nothing else and then yeah for those four days again just for three weeks um the biggest three thing weeks. is to park and that's it wow so there's no pre-season though the pre-seasons are not known to the pre-seasons are the tent the tents that's it we don't have like much shows and stuff for uh, the calypso side of things so they both have their struggling parts but you know right um one of the things that we need to um get rid of is the separating of the both i okay. know um, some people will be like so which one you like better terry um I, I like both <laughs> <laughs> right because i mean they get on like you know like if like if Calypso is some kind of R&B or something, like it's not from Trinidad. This is our culture. And let me tell you something. I don't care if you just sing Calypso or if you just sing Soka. You are entitled to sing both if you want to. Right. If you want to sing Soka and Calypso one year, and then next year you just want to do a Soka song, and then the following year you just release a, a Calypso, and then the next following year you do both. That is okay. You are an entertainer. That is why I don't label anyone as a Calypsonian or a soca artist. You're an entertainer and you yeah. are singing the music of Trinidad and Tobago. And you're right. The thing is, as you're talking, I almost boxed myself right into that position. And so, <laughs> Terry, you know, relative taking on a, a very um, approach in the soca arena, <laughs> you know? And you're right. If you want to sing soca one year and then Calypso both, it's all the same. All the same. It comes from Trinidad and Tobago. Because when you go out, if it's one thing we cannot do is let loose of that word Calypso. Because I will not yeah. forget the time I went, where was boy? Some part of England. Now, honestly, although there are carnivals in England and UK and these places, there are still a lot of people out there that knows nothing about carnival. I and always be shocked sometimes, like, you don't know nothing about carnival. It's like, <laughs> where you live in? <laughs> are you dead? <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of people be like, what is that? What's soca? I said, I sing soca. It's like, what's that? What type of music is that? And it will click back to me and I'll be like, um, Calypso. And it'll be like, oh, Calypso, heart, heart, heart. And that's the oh, first song. Yeah, yeah. Feeling hot, hot, hot. So you have to actually <laughs> go back to Calypso to, to bring people in to understand what carnival is. Right. And some of them call Soka Calypso. They watch it as one genre, you know. So I think we shouldn't, you know, let loose of that word. Um, But two, some of the Calypsonians that they, they call them are too partly to blame because you can't want your music to play on mainstream radio station if your quality of your music is not well done. Okay. See Aaron shaking so I'm, not totally put, I'm not I am not <laughs> going to sit here and put the blame on one side of the ring. No. <laughs> because you can't put a demo out there and expect it to get mainstream, you know, likes and go viral and have million and one views and no. It is our culture, it is our it is the music that represents Trinidad and Tobago. Let us put all good quality out there. <laughs> I don't care what you're singing about. You could be singing about scratching my back like shadow. Put out good quality. Music. Still have a lot of artists out there playing out bad quality and trying to get on radio. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <You're unworthy. laughs> wow. You will yeah, be. I didn't think so. I know I, I get I get, I swear. I get a lot of music. We get a lot of music in our inbox. Well, to say, hey, could you throw this up on your website, blah, 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 or promote it. And there are times I hear some stuff and I think, did this person make this on their laptop at home? It's so horrible. And I'm thinking, I mean, and I actually, one time I felt so bad for the guy, I said, dude, I'm not going to disrespect your craft, but you need to go and get this properly mastered. This is horrible. Like, this is not cool. Like, if you want your song good, but you need to go get it mastered. Not just mastered. Some I know in this new age and age, um, tones are more upgraded, yeah. you know. Yeah. Time to, you know, experiment. Nothing wrong with experimenting. Yeah. And, you know, nothing wrong with allowing some young youngs, as I say it, young youngs, <laughs> young people, you know, be a part of the production of your calypso so it will not song, you know. Oh. Because one of the things that I realized after winning this year is that 
a lot of young people, and when I say young, I'm talking about four year olds, 12 year olds, 11 year olds, was very interested in my song, The Obia, and of course, The Megan. Right. Because it, it resonates with them, not the topic of the song, but how it sounds, the music. Yeah. The music. It's yeah. not the normal bam, ba, da, bam, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. you know, and a lot of the youths think that you have to sing about politics to be a part of the calypso thing. And this is not something I'm just saying off of my head. This is right. this is thing that I've heard them said themselves. They say, Oh gosh, you always had to sing about politics, and I have to tell them, I say, No, you don't. You don't have to. I said, and I tell plenty of them, I say, anytime you want some sort of inspiration and you're not getting it from the new ones, the new Calypsonians of this day, nothing wrong with going back and listening to some Black Stalin. Black Stalin and them used to sing some up-tempo songs in Calypso. And those same Calypso songs used to play in fets. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I said, as you're saying this, if you listen to all these road march tunes from back in the days of Duke or, or whoever, and it was very slow. You Sounds that were in Road March was not Calypso like. It still had a, 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 a vibe to it. Like, I mean, all right. One of Black Stalin's songs that I love very, very much was um, We Can Make It If We Try. Yeah. Just a little harder. No, it have ways of talking about something without actually mentioning it. Now, he was actually speaking about a time that Trinidad was going through um, a, a, a bad time where people yeah. was leaving Trinidad, um, recession, things wasn't, you know, they would rather leave Trinidad to go live other places to look for a better life instead of working with their own economy and, you know, trying to uplift it. And he was talking about actually, when you sit down and listen to it, he was actually talking about politicians and politics. But in the way he structured it, he did not make it song boring. Yeah. Because I remember going to FETS after my father come and jump and make people climb this thing, long this race, dust, and Black Stalin come up on stage with the same political song, same calypso, and did the same thing. We could make it if I remember people whining down to that. I sure there must be a noise that he's singing about. Because <laughs> they're busy whining. Yeah. But the main thing is he made it interesting. That's why I love David Redder too. David Redder does be talking about certain things that you will talk in Calypso, but in the way that he structured it, it is not boring. Right. You understand? Right. That man that man sang a whole psalm. <laughs> <laughs> But he did not sing that whole psalm and that whole um prayer yeah. with the normal pam pa da pam pa da pam pa pa da pa pa da pa da pa da pa da no. He put music to it, music that we know that we can resonate with rhythm to make it not just move, not just listen to the words, but you can also dance to it. Right. You understand? You can True. also dance with it. You could connect with it. And that is one of the things that these youths think that, you know, they run from the Calypso because they think it has to be about and Rowley this and Kamala that and this one this and that one that. No, 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 no. You can sing about anything. You can sing about your life. Yeah. You can sing about the same soca songs that we could be saying. If you slow that down, you get a Calypso. <laughs> <laughs> You understand so, that? Yeah. That is why I was so excited and so glad when um voice was in the Calypso Monarch Finals with Fire Go Bond them. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes, we actually bring in something different than the normal, um, something different to the airs mm -hmm. than the normal um calypso song that we think a calypso is supposed to be sung in like all the time. Right. When I hear Aaron Duncan Calypso and then you come and hear my Calypso and then you hear voice Calypso, all must not sound the same. True. All must not have similar horn patterns. Each must move me differently. 
You understand? That's why yeah. long time Calypso Monarch finals used to be the biggest one of the biggest things. That and Soka Monarch used to be the two main biggest things. Because when you hear Black Stalin, you know Croco not coming and song like Black Stalin. You know after that Duke not coming and songing like Croco. After that singing Zandra, she coming different and the place just mashing up. Denise Plummer not coming. <laughs> hear the kind of music Denise Plummer used to come and sing. No, I mean, you're saying you find a lot of the artists today just song the same. Yes, and that is, um, these are things that I get from youths because we yeah. can't want youths to be a part of the Calypso and we're stuck in our ways. We need to change that. Can't be stuck in our ways. Right. What didn't create this world for it to stay one way? No, no, no. <laughs> we just use our knowledge and the lessons that he gave us in the wrong way. You understand? You understand me? He yeah. blessed us with certain talents to create certain things. We just create it and use it for our own selfish means. But he did not give us that talent just to keep things same way. You understand me? A caterpillar right. don't stay a caterpillar. If he wanted it to stay the same way, then the caterpillar would still be a worm-like kind of creature. <laughs> we weren't meant to stay the same way, Th times change, things need to change. We evolve. We were born a baby. We will come from a sperm, baby, right. teenager into man, back to all again. Because we yeah. were born to change. So, no, I, I, I agree with 100%. I'm sure the viewers, from what they're saying, they're like, you talk the thing, Terry. True, 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 right? And what is my I guess what I'm thinking as you're talking is with soca music for a long time, I think it was suffering in the same pattern of people thought soca music wasn't cool. It was always dance and reggae and reggae, 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 right? And I mm -hmm. heard, you know, now DJs or MCs will say, oh, soca music is cool now. So everybody want to be a part of it because soca is hip. How do we make, now I feel as if we need to now take this down a next step and try and make Calypso hip because as you're right, you think Calypso, you think either old fogies or politics talk. How do we make it hip now and trendy where people are now saying, hey, look, all these artists bubbling on the Calypso and they have some real bad tunes that now could get played in the mix. Um, and we bring Calypso up a bit, maybe. You don't have to be too old tempo. You can bring it mid-school or new school. Like a new, yeah, a new school Calypso. Like, yeah. Um, we need to bring some new minds within the industry. Ideas. Marketing. Um, presenting it in the most professional way that we can um and we need to stand firm for certain things like right now is is help me if i'm wrong um iran or anyone other they call in our thing island music like what <laughs> is island music am i wrong island pop island um, for island a while music. it was island pop Ad adult adult music old people island. music i wouldn't like to call the calypso which is bad <laughs> You understand me? And um, as I said, both sides of the fence has to be blamed because most of them just study competition and not studying that, A, after the competition, this is our culture. The word culture is bigger than competition. Right. <laughs> yes. But they like this. Because after I die, it is still going to go on. The word culture is bigger than competition. Now, we need to put both Soka and Calypso on a level that we would need competition for every artist to be millionaires. <laughs> right. Yes. You understand me? Because I don't see Beyonce and them entering no competition. I don't see no dancehall artists entering no competition. Yeah. But no, most of the it can be a pros and cons for competition. competitions. Right. They enter the competition because sometimes that's the only means. And I can't get vexed with anybody that wants to be a part of the competition. No. You understand? Because how things are how things are put right now, how things are right now, it needs to change. I don't know who is going to change it. Maybe it's Aaron, maybe somebody after Aaron, maybe somebody right in front of Aaron. Maybe it's you. <laughs> I believe is a cohesive thing that we need to do. It, 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 it something needs to happen. Something needs to happen. Yeah. It, it needs to happen. 
Everybody, I, every entertainer needs to be a mil a damn millionaire. As as, as, as um <laughs> as free tongue collectives say, no millionaires. <laughs> You understand me? So that is hence the reason why most Calypsonians or even sometimes soccer artists run to the competitions because it's it's a bread and butter. Um, because most artists sometimes just have to do free shows. Right. So when they enter the competition and they reach the finals, they know the surety are a couple of thousands in the pocket. Yeah. Because after doing so much of free shows for carnival, you ain't want the carnival to end and you still didn't have nothing in your pocket. But but just to the record out there, guys, I Terry, I did speak to a particular artist, I think it was this carnival, who said mm -hmm. he's not gonna enter the competition again because he ended up spending more and didn't win. And if you don't win and it's you just don't make you just lose. Yeah, yeah, there's, you there's, there's, you end up coming, you know, place, you end make nothing, then end up true. spending. Yeah, I um I salute anyone that don't want to enter the competition again. But the trick is sometimes you just have to know. All right, like I was in the finals of the Soka Mona, I could have go extra all out. But when I watch the competition, I know I would not come first. I know I wouldn't have been in the first four. Sometimes right. some of us need to be realistic. Yes. And not what spend on props. Yeah. Expecting because you're spending more than how much you are going to get just in just for being in the finals. And that don't make sense. That don't make sense. You can't live beyond your means. You already know what's going on with you personally, so you try not to stretch. Don't stretch your hand where you can't reach. Agreed. <laughs> Anybody knows me, if I am not too keen to come on to the Instagram and post nothing, I'm not going to post anything. Because I, I, I ain't really, I ain't really um, verse with the fake it to make it yet. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I'm still in training. <laughs> I'm still in training in that. So if I look like an El Vigro and I know I have to be looking a certain way to come on Instagram, you're not going to see Terry. If that is if that is what I have to trust me, you're not going to see Terry. If I can't be me at times, you're not going to see Terry. Because you know and I know I don't look like that all the time. Yeah. I don't sleep with eyelashes quite here. I, 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 I can't even sleep with the wig on my head. <laughs> you know, no, I just say that, Terry. I still feel that like we live in, a, in a, a day and age where real sells, like people want real. If like Cardi B, you know, for instance, she will come on one day looking at a fly, one day she'll just come on with wherever, I guess, her hair or, or weave yeah. off or, and talk some but talk some and... Yeah, because she's confident within herself. There are some people that are not that confident within themselves yet. Right. Don't get tired. There are a lot of people out here looking more confident than I am, and they are not. Yeah. You have to be confident within yourself to do things like that. Yeah. You understand, man? How do we, how do we all get to that confident level? You just basically have to say efforts. You don't care about nobody. Yeah. I have a family member that don't. Don't go outside without makeup. Right. She does not. I can't yeah. remember seeing her without makeup. I can't remember how she was look without makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but it have those type of people. And I try not to, you know, push that forward. I I want my fans to know that, yo, this is me. I am right. real. I cry. I get angry. I get frustrated. Mm -hmm. I get tired. I just feel to give up. In fact, I in fact, I did. I had five thousand six hundred or seven hundred and forty-three dollars in my bank account before I entered the competition. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Yeah. I got my song a week before the competition because I was like, you know what? I can't be doing this for so much a years running on my dreams, and I have a son. If I was by myself, it's a difference, but I have somebody that I have to look after right you understand he don't know what he wants to be yet because every time you ask him is something different but i still want to prepare for that so i had given up and did an interview on loop with laura and i told her that was it for me i didn't want it to but i was studying my son and i wow. know my situation so i didn't want to take the chance 
But then um, full blown entertainment came concerning this casting. And knowing me, once I do in soca, I have to do my calypso. Right. And I called Maria. Maria said she had something there. And I finished it off. And that was Megan. And that was it. And that was it. So I promised myself I could do that again. But I also promised myself that I have to find ways. We, we not I, because I can't do it by myself. Have to find, because I don't have all the ideas. I don't always have great ideas. I will not. Yeah. You understand? I might have part of a great idea and somebody else might have a next part and we connect it and we say, all right, this is the goal. Right. You understand? So we need to market, start marketing Trinidad and Tobago culture, which is Soka, Calypso, and Pan, because yes. Trinidad is not only known for Pan or only known for Soka, only known for Calypso. And as Aaron was saying earlier, a lot of us start off in Calypso, because me too, I used to sing Calypso first. <laughs> yeah. You understand? In the junior Calypso. And I also sang the first, the first ever junior Soka Monarch. I sang the team song for it. it. Was Soka in your school bag? Soka in the school. When Monroe had the first ever junior Soka monarch, and that year I think um Orlando Octave had one. I think so. Yeah. So Orlando Octave is also someone who was in the so junior Soka. Yeah. <laughs> all of us, all of us, all of us. Everybody. It's like the Everybody academy. Had a piece of it, so. <laughs> But we have wow. to start marketing the thing properly and we have to start putting good music out there. Right. Good I want to ask you a, a just... question, Terry, as you were saying that last point that struck a, a, a chord with me. Um, you said that you pretty much said you were giving up, right? Because there was a, there was, it came to a point where reality was no longer, I guess, matching your, your goal, your dreams, or your passion. And I'm somebody... That I for years I'll still say I'll tell people I'm a very lucky person. And later on, people said, you know what, Dre, you're not lucky, you're blessed, right? And by saying that, you know, I'll give you an example. You know, I, I got a I'm in school, I barely paid for my tuition in the US because I'm in this, you know, community college. I'm at a cash register about to buy books. I'm trying to run down secondhand books, I'm trying to run down to photocopy people who buy their books because I can't afford the books. The girl in front of me is a Trini that was there already and living in the US. And she looked at me and said, here what Trini, I got this $300 grant to think for books. Bring your books up, pay for it because I'm not going to use all of it, right? Crap like that happens to me a lot of times. So I got my books. I couldn't pay for it. She paid for it. I said, man, thank you. I'm so lucky. People said you're blessed. But it came to a point now where you have responsibilities. So you have kids and you, or you have rent to pay and you have X amount to do. And what you're doing, not bringing in the level of income to match or to support X, you know, so you have to pay for, you know, my kid to go to university, but I'm not making university money for them to send them to university and pay for them to go full, tu full tuition and room and board. How someone like yourself or Aaron or myself, what do we do if that's all you know, that's all you eat, drink and live? What do you do when you come to a point where, the money isn't working with the with the vision How, you, because you can't give up. But what do you do? Like you don't want to go and work in a regular nine to five or get a job at some restaurant or bank. What do we do? Like, what is the advice to someone who comes to that point, like yourself, too? How did you get out of that? And were you lucky or were you blessed to go on then win <laughs> the so called Eclipse of Monarch? Oh, that was just pure. You stick to it and you just stick to your passion. Um. As I said, it was a real long time for me. And even when I decided to still do it, I wasn't like, all right, I'm going, I'm going. All I was like, Terry, you're taking your last cent here to buy props. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't go on stage and just do your best. You had to go right. and overdo it. <laughs> so you have to commit. You have to overdo it. And honestly, I just say my prayers. And everybody finally was overcome. I was like, I had to because I know my situation. You understand? But what, um, what I will advise every artist 
to to start doing now, which 2020 I think opened a lot of artists' eyes, is yeah. that having your own business, having a business on the side of music that you're mm. running, you know, you're yeah. not working for nobody, it's your own boss, but having okay, a business so outside, also. outside of the music that you have running. Because let me think, Ellen, let me go to Jay Z. Jay Z is a billionaire. But when you check his network, his his um investments is what bring in the most set of money, not the yeah. music. Right. It's his businesses, his investments, his brands. You understand? So we have to actually market ourselves as brands because we are brands. Yeah. Because if Aaron Printer Jersey now saying Aaron don't come with the name of his song. People are going to buy it. People want to buy it. Mm -hmm. So right there, you're a brand. And we have to market ourselves as such. That is why I said Calypso and Soka needs to be marketed properly, needs to be represented properly, and put to all the world in a professional manner. Yeah. Because sometimes people are just take it for a joke. Just take it as a hustle. Like Soka and Calypso is, a, is, you know, like a block. You come, you sing, you make a little money, and yeah, you go back they to do. your day job. And, 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 and I don't know if you heard this before, but I, one of the best things I heard was from Farmer Nappy on Uber Soka Cruise when he was doing a speech. And he said, Soka has no pension plan. He's like, oh, it has no what? Pension. No, it doesn't. He said, guys, make sure and save for when you're done or can't do it no more. Start saving for that day. So a lot of artists might make money and start up buy Gucci and this and that, and <laughs> they could end up down the road with nothing. It doesn't, it doesn't so, have no pension plan. As we're talking you about that, to, that's know, something I love the fact that you start yourself outside have to put business. all these things in place. That is true. Yeah. There's a lot of things. I mean, and I tell an Aaron too, I was like, Aaron, you know, <laughs> you need to to connect with some of the experienced artists. And, and and get some advice so you could you could move ten times faster than what you're doing today, you know? Yeah. People feel like, masters and stuff is safe enough for the pension plan, you know, like masters of a song. They do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plenty of people out there, plenty of artists think, okay, I have so much percentage on my master, I have hundred percent on this master, this they save enough for the pension plan. But it's not really that. So, yeah, because a hundred percent of nothing is what, <laughs> but doc, wow, that's some good advice. So, I mean, we hit the one hour mark, and it was a great conversation, guys. Um, what I part of this show mainly is to is to talk about besides you know some history, what we're working on today, and what we can expect that's coming in the future. So Terry, I mean, what you, you mentioned are you you doing this thing with the Soka Calypso? Sorry, Calypso Fest. I show a show called Calypso Fest, streaming through WAC. I have one on the thirteenth, the nineteenth, and the twenty-seventh. It's my way of um assisting with the artists. They come, they get paid, they sing two songs. They can sing one song. Um, also. So is this a podcast? Is a live. video? Is it a live show? What is it? It's a live show. You stream live through WAC. Um, right. through their website okay. or on Facebook. On what I days? I keep a proper show. Huh? And the days are, what days are, what are the days? The days are on the 13th, the 19th, and the 27th of December. Okay. Now, is this going to be every month? We're looking forward to this? Or is it just yeah, the summer right now? Yeah, every month I do like about three or two shows every month. Right. On WAC? On WAC. Nice. Yes, I do. All right, so that's one thing. That's the main thing right now. You have other things going on. That is one of my New things, music. and then I have my. I'm um, actually recording my soca and calypso song, <laughs> and preparing the videos for both. Because that's the next thing Calypsonians don't do. They don't do videos. Zero. <laughs> I was telling Aaron that Terry, Aaron does music videos so all his songs, and I think every artist, mm -hmm. you know, even with yourself, I was looking for something it's like you know. I know we had COVID, but you and Cast, you know, we need a throwback thing music video. Yeah. There's a lot we of things there. We were supposed to do one, but then, oh, the COVID yeah. came. And yeah. phew, so I don't know if that's and still I, I, I stumble upon Smile, and I tell you this. I used to listen to Smile on repeat. 
And when I found that music video, I said, oh, Terry was smile. And Ataclan, I was like, this song is so classic. I yeah. forever loved it. I, it, just, it came off my playlist, but bringing you on the show, Smile came back, and I'm like, Smile Thank is you. awesome. Thank you. It's awesome. Um, okay, so, um, Aaron. Yeah. So, first thing, um, Terry Island, that's not how you call me for that show yet, but we go work. You what? I you ain't calling for the show. For the show yet, but something going to happen someday. Um, what I basically working on for 2021 go go down. I will be producing all of my music, right? There's I this place that I'm in right now. This is my studio and everything. So I will be producing my tracks for 2021 and beyond. I just released a song which was co-produced with me by me and Kit Israel, right? Advocate Productions. Um, but from that is when we go in into the songs that was wholly and solely produced by me for the 2021 Carnival, right? Mm -hmm. I will also be doing Calypso as well because like Terry, I do Calypso and Soka. I don't stop doing both right. and never will stop doing both, right? I will be bringing out tunes. The next tune I'm supposed to bring out is supposed to come out in January, so look out for that. And okay. Yeah. We're just going up from here. For sure. Nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I I'm gonna plug your song now, Aaron. I had your song lined up, but this program does not allow me to put in something longer than five minutes. Your song was like five minutes and thirteen seconds. Yeah, I'm so video. I want huh? the video. The video. The video. Yeah, your video for stay. The audio. Um, go on rhythm cracker. You can get the audio. Right. So yeah. I want to tell everybody on the show to go on your YouTube page, your channel, and the newest song is called Stay S T A Y. Yes. Yes, and it. check out the music video. Make sure and like it, comment, and share it, because that's how the YouTube algorithm works to get this song yeah. to go up. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Anything else to add, guys, before we wrap? Well, everybody, stay safe, pray, <laughs> still be happy. I mean, yes, twenty twenty is kicking ass, but guess what? We are live to complain about it. So exactly. yeah. Totally. So what I'm going to do, I, I, I was able to load Smile so we could do a throwback video, Terry, and we could run Smile for the audience and, and we could okay. close with that. Yeah. So right, big up everybody. And I'm going to run the music videos, Asa Clan and Terry Lyons. I think, what year was it? 2009? Yep. 2009. Smile. We'll air that. And then I'll come back on and, and do a close. But thank you so much, Terry, for joining. Thank you. And, and talking any knowledge, and we're gonna make Calypso more than cool again. <laughs> yeah. And, and Aaron, thanks for joining. It was a, is a, a and a, you know, yeah. showing me learning more about you was a pleasure. That was Terry Lyons and Aaron Duncan. So great show. I learned a lot. I hope you guys did. Uh, we gotta make the Calypso art form great again. It is there, but as Terry said, we have to put the C in culture not in competition and shout out to aaron duncan for joining because i learned a lot um about the whole junior soccer monarch and how much that means to the industry and where a lot of great talent you know is born next show please god probably will be from um somewhere else I, i'm supposed to travel tomorrow so we'll see where i end up love you guys peace